please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hi, very good morning. Watching Trading Hour on CNBC TV 18. I'm Ikta Batra. With me, Surbhi Upadhyay. And it's turning out to be another day of a breather, at least for the frontline indices. And we have the mid caps which are underperforming. So it seems as though it's a little bit of deja vu from yesterday's trading session. So currently, the Nifty is just about down by around five odd points. We have the mid cap index, which is down around 0.8% at this point. We have a weak advanced decline ratio on our hands, and the a uh, key factor that we continue to watch but doesn't seem to be affecting our markets in terms of sentiment right now are crude prices where it is inching closer towards um, even $78 per barrel. A lot of stocks in focus to discuss. We have Federal Bank which has fallen 9 to 10 percent post numbers. We have other stocks from the consumption space, future consumer, future lifestyle, Asian pains, Titan, all of these stocks and Indian Bank and Union Bank which will be coming out with numbers as well, Asian paint and Titan also coming out with Q4 numbers. So a lot to watch in today's trade. Hi, Sirbhi. Hi, Ekta. Yes, good morning. It's a very muddled and mixed picture right now, uh, as you put it on the index itself. Because if you talk about the Nifty 50 tally, you have a couple of the heavy weights that are batting in favor of the bulls. The reason why we're not seeing a total collapse is because of reliance, because of uh, something like Infosys, even ICICI bag to an extent. These are the stocks that are holding the pillar up uh, as far as the Nifty is concerned. But on the flip side, the FMCG twins, ITC lever, <clears throat> there is a lot of weakness over there. Uh, you were also seeing a bit of a sell down in a couple of tech names. TCS in particular uh, would be a case in point. So these are some of the weaker hands. I just want to talk about a few mid caps because we are getting a lot of severe result reactions. And in addition, it's generally a very weak trend for the mid cap index. Look at that. It's at the day's low down almost 1% right now. So just some examples, SIS, JSPL. Um, even something like, of course, a federal bank, which is still nursing losses of about 10%. So these are some very severe result reactions that we've got uh, this morning. And beyond that as well, there is an overall sense of sort of weakness, a couple of sugar stocks, a couple of the NBFCs like Capital First, Manapuram. These are stocks that are on the lower side. So mid-caps, definitely a watch point. Well, let's get started with some trading ideas then. We've got Mitesh Thakkar joining in. Good morning, Mitesh. What do you make of this weakness that has settled in? We are pretty much at the lows of the day now. Uh, advice on the index and, of course, stock ideas. Good morning, Sudhvi. I think it uh, looks like more of the fact that 10,750, 760 on an hourly closing basis is holding out. Today's low is very similar to yesterday's low. So I think after a good rally starting from 10,000 and below levels, I think this is now you know, kind of taking some uh, catching up with some breath. I think the moving averages are slightly far away. So maybe we'll have a couple of days of consolidation. The key here should be if we start sustaining below 10,760 for an hour, I think then it would be a breakout. Else, I think you could spend an, uh, around three to four sessions broadly in this range of 10,620, 600 on the downside to about 10,760 on the upside. So while the directional bias remains on the upside, you know, you are possibly seeing a, a couple of subdued uh, sessions to be also uh, signals of consolidation to uh, come into place. And therefore, the idea should be to buy more on declines and uh, wait it out, I think. But stock specific wise, we are trading with slightly more of long bias. And the idea will be to trade more on the uh, long side, but a couple of days of consolidation could happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mitesh, hi, morning. Uh, had a chart check on Z Entertainment. It's coming out with numbers today. It's up around 2 odd percent today, but it hasn't really done much on a year to date basis. It's up around 3.5 to 4 odd percent. How, do, how does it look on the charts? Yeah. So, Z, I think, uh, you know, is, is uh, very close to its uh, 52 week highs and uh, possibly uh, all time highs. I think uh, the early highs were at, uh, between levels of 610 to about 615. I think uh, once it crosses that and the chart structure is definitely positive, so once it crosses 615, 620, I think you would see the stock head towards 680, 700 zone. So I'm quite positive, but I think uh, a good trade will happen once we get past the earlier highs. Okay. Um, uh, specific trading calls. What are you going with, Mitesh, this hour? Yeah. So on the trading side, I think, uh, you know, I have uh, uh, buys on, uh, sorry, uh, buys on... Uh, uh, max financial i think uh, that's a buy with a stop at 516 for targets of 550 while a cash stock which is flfl i think has had a good gap and a breakout today that's a buy with a stop below 460 and look for targets of 510 okay well we have a couple of twitter queries now for you uh, first up is siddharth thousand shares of syntex which he's bought at 35 wants to know whether to hold or sell that stock 
Uh, see, the stock has nearly halved, and uh, the other thing is that it's come down to very important support levels of around 15-16, which is where the stock had bottomed out in February 2016. So maybe you know he can buy more uh, <coughs> uh, closer to about 16 and half, 17 rupees, and keep a stop loss below 15. If this earlier low hold, then I think after some consolidation, you might get a reversal, which could see the stock head towards 23 kind of levels on the upside, which could be a good exit. Okay. All right, uh, Mitesh. Uh, thank you very much for that. We'll touch base with you again through the day. Right now, let's move to some FNO trading ideas. We have Sia Rudramurthy, Head of Research, research at uh, Vachana Investments, joining in for the same. Uh, Rudramurthy, good morning. What trades are you going with? See, having the Bank Nifty expiry for this week again today, I expect consolidation in market and market should definitely hold this range. On the downside, I see this 26,000 getting held for the day. And on the upside, I don't see any huge movement happening above 26,250, 26,300. And similarly on Nifty, I see this range of 10,700 to 10,780 to stay. So I am expecting a consolidation. So one can definitely look at selling both call as well as put option, which I mean as selling a straddle or a strangle. And you can eat the entire premium. I can eat 10,000. Uh, in case of Nifty, I can definitely sell 10,700 put or 10,800 call. Other way around, Bank Nifty similarly, 26,300 call can be sold or sell 26,000 put. By doing this, consolidation will definitely give you that eating away of premium. Now, keeping the index view aside, stock specific, I'm very, very bullish on CESC. This stock has definitely consolidated and it has given a huge breakout above levels of 1050. Every dips in CESC is a buying opportunity positionally. Initially, look at targets of 1100 on CESC with a stop loss of 1075. Z for me looks very, very positive and it is trading at all time highs, yearly highs and in any weak market too, this stock is definitely in its own bull trend. Lot of open interest addition is seen on the positive side. So for me, zeal can be definitely bought in futures. Look at initial targets of 613 and once it breaks 613, 615 level, eventually for a medium term, it can even move to 630, 650 zone, have a stop loss of 595 and I have a very clear, clear sell call on Orient Bank. This stock has broken all its support level, looks very, very weak in futures. And even today, I'm seeing open interest addition with stock moving on the downside. Delivery best selling is also seen in Orient Bank. Very, very simple stock to sell. Look at targets of 82 rupee on Orient Bank futures and have a stop loss of 86.50 for this short call. Okay, all right, Rudhamurthy, we're going to let you go on that note. Thanks very much for joining in and taking us through all of those strategies. Well, let's talk about the stock which has lost a lot today. It is Federal Bank, which has lost over 10%. This is after the company has reported its highest quarterly slippages ever. As you know, the asset quality has worsened. The net interest margins, too, have come in at nine quarter lows. Uh, hear out, Big Bull Rakesh Junjanwala, in fact, quizzing the Federal Bank management on the investor conference call last evening. No, I don't understand the 65, 70 crore credit cost because you have 2800 gross NPS and 1550 is net NPS. You say you recognize 1000 to 1100 crores next year. 1100 to 1200 crores, yes. So, your gross NPS will become around 4000. 1100 to 1200 crores is slippage, Rakesh. Hello? That will be the slippages for the year. So recovery roughly in a quarter, if you've seen 222 cross in Q3 and 239 cross in Q4. Cash slippages will be much lower then. Maybe around 500, 600. So fresh slippages will be 1100 to 1200. Then you have a net of the uh, recoveries and upgrades per quarter. So, uh, right, so therefore, 1100 to 200 is upgrade. So that means the growth in this should not be more than 3000, 3100. Increase should not be more than 400 crores. Okay, so that was uh, Rakesh Junjunwala quizzing the federal bank management in the rise in those slippages has really disappointed uh, investors today. Stock still trading down or 10, 10 and a half percent. Continues on the mid cap market. Uh, you do have a couple of the India Group uh, stocks, India Bulls Ventures, which has been extremely volatile. That stock's again down about two, two and a half percent. HCC is down almost five percent now. Something like an IDBI bank 
uh, is also trending on the lower side of the screen. So these are some just some examples of uh, pressure points in today's trading action. But from equities, let's move to the world of commodities. Manisha Gupta is joining in with a roundup of all the action. Good morning, Manisha. Thank you so much for that, Suri. After 3% gains overnight, we have seen the crude oil prices gain up yet again by nearly a percentage point in the Asian markets. So while, of course, the Iran story is playing out, also in addition to that, you have the U.S. weekly inventories, which have declined for crude oil, for gasoline. There has been a decline in weekly inventories from U.S., and that in turn has been supportive. In any case, we have seen the crude oil prices gain up by nearly 5.5% in last two trading sessions. And as the markets still grapple with the potential consequences, Consequences and the supply concerns, the strong demand, etc. You are looking at all of that speculative long positions continue to hold on in case of crude there. Also, apart from that, you have seen various reports come in in the last 24 to 48 hours revising their outlook for crude on the upward for 2018. The latest, of course, has been Goldman Sachs saying that 82 and a half is what they see in sense of crude oil prices by this summer itself. Virendra Chauhan, our oil analyst at Energy Aspects, now joins us to talk more about that. Virendra, hi, good to have you. What is your sense as uh, with the U.S. walking out of Iran, that being taken in by the market, it really is about the kind of sanctions, the kind of impact, and what choices do the other consumers and exporters really have is what the world is talking about. How have you been reading into this? Yeah, um, that seems to be the driver for oil prices right now. And really what's what's going on and what's driving the oil prices, everybody, be it refiners, is trying to assess um, where how much Iranian production is going to be impacted by mm. and where the alternative source of supply is going to come from. Mm. So what is your sense? How much of a supply impact can we see here? And uh, has that been factored in by the prices right now? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, if we were to take uh, Q4 and Q1-18 Iranian um, oil exports of around 2.5 million barrels per day, we assume that sanctions impact around 20% uh, of that level. So you're looking at about half a million barrels per day, which uh, other producers, whether it's Russia, whether it's U.S., or whether it's um, another Middle Eastern producer such as Saudi Arabia or Iraq, um, are going to have to make up. Now, that's what we're currently factoring in. If it comes in higher than half a million barrels per day, then that's an extremely bullish development for the oil market. Mm -hmm. We're just a few cents away from 78 barrel for the Brent prices right now. What kind of an upside do you see here? Are you looking for some consolidation? Or with the kind of gains that we have seen in the past couple of days, do you see that continuing uh, at least this week? Yeah, I think uh, this week uh, we expect oil prices to continue rising. Yeah. Um, we do expect as the seasonal demand strength kicks in to price for prices to move into the 80s um, before the year end. Uh, do you see it also holding around those 80s or do you see the supply gaps being filled in by uh, the OPEC members from US, from Russia perhaps? Yeah, I think uh, OPEC um, and Russia are both going to play their cards very, very carefully. Um, they're, they're aware that, you know, it took a long period of time to co come together and bring the market back into the situation where we are, where the inventory situation is a little bit more manageable. Maybe it's a little bit tight now with these geopolitical risks uh, partic occurring in the Middle East. But um, so uh, the message from uh, Saudi Arabia, the message from Russia from the OPEC meeting at the end of June is going to be a very measured one. They don't want to uh, give the market the sense that they're going to ramp production up very, very quickly mm. and therefore lead to a correction in the oil price. So I think they're looking for a price range which works, particularly Saudi Arabia, which works for both producers and consumers. Sure. Virendra, one final question, and this is about India, with the crude oil prices rising and the rupee depreciating and India's uh, you know, dependence on import such high, how does it or how do you look at India in that light? Yeah. I mean, uh, all the way through the downturn, India was the uh, leading source of demand growth um, globally. Their GDP was at 7.5% and their oil demand growth was uh, at times stronger than China. So it was the highest in the world. Now, clearly, uh, uh, low oil prices was a big supporter of that. And I think, uh, you know, with the elections coming up in 2019, I think uh, the government will want to play their cards right. But um, it's very, very clear and it's undoubted. Um, there's no doubting the fact that um, higher oil prices are going to impact uh, India's uh, um, 
budget deficit. Um, it's going to lead to a widening, and then uh, the government uh, will have one eye on the elections, and so it will need to keep investing or need to keep growth there. So we do see some downside risk to demand growth, but this is also something that uh, the OPEC members and Russia will be keen to keep an eye on. They don't want demand growth to slow down too much from here. So, uh, yeah, it's a fine balancing act. Let's get talking about a lot of numbers that are expected in today's trade and there's a lot of focus on consumption stocks, especially maybe post that Flipkart deal that took place yesterday. We have Asian Paints, which is coming out with numbers from the Nifty space. We have Titan, which is releasing numbers as well as Nestle and Z Entertainment as well. So we have our in-house experts to join in to tell us what to expect. Manglam, well, let's start with you and uh, apprise us of what we can expect from first Asian Paints and then also tighten absolutely Ekta. So you know if only buying a uh, getting a house painted was as easy as buying something on flipkart and walmart but uh, asian paints uh, numbers expected anywhere between 230 to 330 the street is watching out for a couple of details the first one total income growth of close to around 11 and a half percent is what our poll is throwing up a level of around 40 4400 uh, crore on the top line is something we're working with counterintuitively the street is working for an EBITDA margin expansion given the company's price hike i say counterintuitive because crude prices have risen the rupee has depreciated we have consigned numbers to work with as a benchmark and out there the margins did disappoint the street so we'll keep an eye out on a, an EBITDA number of close to 830 crores and as a result of this the bottom line growth is expected to be about 12 and a half percent higher close to around that 540 crore mark is what we're expecting for Asian paints apart from the reported numbers we'll be watching out for management commentary on the India domestic volume growth the street is working with a number of anywhere between seven to eight percent the management does not give the exact number we'll have to watch out uh, mid to high single digits is something that the street will like okay that's asian pains uh, manglam expecting some sparkle from titan Solid as gold, uh, <laughs> uh, so you know that's that, that's the one I'm going with for Titan this quarter. Primarily because the management has said that uh, you know fourth quarter they will see jewelry re seven, uh, re uh, jewelry segment revenue grow anywhere in mid teens, 15 to 17 percent is what the street is working with, and jewelry contributes 80 percent to their overall revenue mix. So on a top line basis. We're expecting 15.5% uh, uh, on the revenue, close to around that 4,000 crore mark here is uh, uh, what we're watching out for as well. A bit of 400 crores is what we're watching out for. And at the same time, margins in double digits, 10.2% is what our poll throws up. Net profit growth of 41%, anywhere between 280 to 300 crores is something that the street will take with both hands. Titan, remember, because of uh, the strong growth that it has shown, that stock trades at 40 times FY20 EV uh, uh, price to earnings, so we need to keep eye out on valuations but then again it stands out among all the other jewelry players in the market right now which is why it gets that sort of valuation okay well that's on titan but manglam stay on we still have to quiz you about what we can expect from fmcg major nestle but we'll do that in just a bit let's go across to sonal and ask her what she's expecting from z entertainment uh, this quarter sonal uh, thanks a lot for that, Ikta. Well, you know, for Z Entertainment, one thing that we need to keep in mind is that last quarter, uh, last year, same quarter, they had sold off their sports business and also they had made two acquisitions. So, on reported basis, it will not be correct to compare the numbers, but on reported basis, a revenue growth of around 11% is expected. EBITDA is expected to stay flat at around 474 crores, but some sort of margin contraction is what we are expecting because they had launched their OTT app Z5 in this quarter because of which the con content costs have gone up. Profits on reported basis are expected to go down by 83% because last year they had this uh, uh, component of other income because they sold off their sports business but on an adjusted, adjusted basis profits are expected to go down by around 14%. Ad revenue growth on adjusted basis we are expecting at around 20 to 21% and domestic subscription growth of around uh, 16 to 17% but on like to like basis uh, domestic subscription growth is expected to decline by 3 to 3 to 4%. So these are two major numbers that we will be looking out for and management had also guided for 30 percent plus margins last quarter let's see what really works out for, uh, for the company this quarter okay all right so many thanks for that and it's back to mangla mangla your poll is throwing up a Pretty good quarter. Should I say sweet and tangy quarter for Nestle? What's going to drive it? I don't know what my poll is throwing up. My director says wrap it in less time than it takes to make Maggie. So that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Total income growth of 14% is what we're working with uh, on Nestle. The stock is at a record high, so a good quarter is definitely expected. Margins likely to expand because most of their input co uh, cost prices have seen uh, no up, up move, no inflationary trends, rather deflationary trends in some of them. And as a result of that, net profit growth of 32%. For Nestle, most importantly, 
we'll have to watch out for what the company has done uh, with new launches. They've launched around 45 new products in the last two years. And post Maggie led recovery, the focus is on new products. So that is something we'll be watching out for. Stock is at a record high. Good, good set uh, uh, of uh, financial performance expected. Yeah. Okay, all right, Manglav. Thanks very much for that. 45 product launches you just know what? in the past couple of uh, months. That's exactly. I mean, I'm trying not to be a big Maggie consumer, <laughs> but the number of variants which are out yeah. there on the shelves, yeah. I mean, it's mind-boggling on the types of different Maggie <laughs> variants that you have. Well, um, it's better to stay away from it. <laughs> but nonetheless, we have Ashwini Gujral joining in uh, to discuss what exactly uh, the market picture is looking like. Well, Ashwini, hi. Afternoon, over to you then for the Nifty. We're consolidating, but there's further sort of weakness coming in for the mid caps. See, according to me, consolidation is a word that does not mean a whole lot <laughs> because uh, the market is getting ready to fall. Hmm. And the reason for that is that today in the morning, the Nifty and the Bank Nifty tried to cross yesterday's high, and both the indices have failed. And uh, they're sitting on pretty large rallies, almost vertical rallies. So I wouldn't be surprised that uh, if we see a further downside, and particularly today, you know, suddenly the market wakes up to higher crude prices and bond yield and all the negatives. Uh, because, you know, since now people are talking about Congress being ahead, etc. So uh, maybe going into the elections with this sort of bravado may not be a good idea. So my sense is the selling can accentuate uh, going into the close. Already we are seeing uh, metals coming under fairly heavy pressure. So having said that, uh, India Bulls housing is a sell with a stop of 1240, a target of 1180. Uh, Vedanta is a sell with a stop of 285, target of 272. And Capital First is a sell with a stop of 600, target of uh, 575. Today I think uh, NBFCs will uh, really take it on the chin because since morning, uh, there is some heavy selling on NBFCs. Okay, by the way, uh, uh, more questions for you, Ashwini. Meanwhile, we're getting some uh, inputs from uh, the network about uh, maybe longer trading, trading hours. hours for uh, rupee traders. So get Oof. ready till 8 p.m. Oh so there's so much of talk in the air around all this, and you know, I think it's, it's something that's so almost it's a given. 11 hours then, yeah. because the rupee yeah. market opens at 9, 9 p.m. Currently, it closes at 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. So they want to extend it all the way to 8 p.m. now, maybe because uh, there'll be some amount of live trading from, say, the U.S. markets uh, when the, yeah. their currency yeah. markets. Um, yeah, there's no end to it. I mean, I mean, currency like the dollar trades for several hours yeah. after we shot. So. I mean, there's, there's no end. You can keep a market open 24 hours if that's the logic or the rationale. But anyway, uh, we will get you more on this in just a bit. Ashwini, I want to come back to you or call on the market because you made this call yesterday and you said that you're seeing a top form. Uh, for the reference, actually, it should put out all the Asian markets. All of them are doing better than us. Uh, uh, we seem to be suffering from a local issue and it's probably politics, Ashwini, as you're pointing out. On the index, is there a, still, is there a short trade still? Uh, and which index would you then go with, Nifty or Nifty Bank? See, if the market starts to fall, Nifty Bank will get hit hardest because so far we are, uh, you know, ignoring inflation, etc., everything, and that's where the longs are uh, there. So just keep a high of the day as a stop and get short. It didn't work yesterday. There's a good chance that it starts to work today because you are now, you know, only two days away from the event. So chances are that a lot of people who are sitting on profits are likely to take them. Okay, all right, uh, Shuni, we have a couple of Twitter queries for you now. Mirza has 1,081 shares of Aurobindo Pharma, which are bought at uh, 670 rupees, and 1,413 shares of Sun Pharma, which are bought at 643. Also, 1,124 shares of Lupin, which are bought at 998, wants to know the way forward on all of these pharma stocks. See, trying to buy stuff because it's value is a very bad way of investing because the value can get deeper. And the problem is that even these guys don't know what's happening to them. So forget about retail investors. You know, pharma is an underperformer. It hasn't performed at all in this entire rally from 99.50. It's probably one of the last sectors you should be looking at today. You know, consumer stocks is the flavor. They are easy to invest in. I think just uh, lock out of all of these stocks and get into you know simpler stuff like Voltas or you know Jubilant, Titan, these sort of companies. 
pharma is still in a lot of trouble. I see what you're saying, Ashwini. Unless someone can read a Form 483 as well as Ekta, I know different categories of recall and all of these different you know, classifications of drugs. It's a very complex landscape to be in. Thanks very much for uh, taking us through your market call, Ashwini. On